Yeah. All right, guys, let's go. How was your trip to Flagstaff? That was good. It, it, it was great to go up there and see Liam. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, see him. And, you know, we haven't got to go to many games this year. Just the schedule just hasn't aligned. They've actually played a ton of games, uh, you know, the same day as we did, almost at the same time. So uh, it, it was fun to go up there and see him and, and hang out with him for a little bit. Aside from having it here, is maybe finishing the Pac-12 era in L.A. kind of a, a fitting? I mean, I, I love how it sets up. I mean, we're done with Mikhail done um and it's it's time to move on and, and play away from here so i mean i, I couldn't for ask for a better ending um you know I'm, I'm not talking pac 12 you guys can get all you know philosophical and emotional and sentimental about that I, i'm just saying you know for, for us to go out and, and finish the season on the road is good because we're gonna have to play you know really well away from home the rest of the year so you know and i think we have been playing well away from home as of late so let's keep it going would ever say to you, maybe a fan or season tick holder earlier in the season, hey coach, we'd love to get back to the Final Four if we ever do, with it being in Phoenix this year, we'd love for it to be this year. Are you aware that it's in Phoenix? Does that mean anything? Well, of course I'm aware, but uh, it doesn't mean anything any more than any other, you know, thing. And, and you know, obviously I, I've got to stay locked into the moment and, and, and I know how hard it is to, to, to get there. So, um, yeah, we're, 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 not, we're not even – having any crazy thoughts about that. We, we honestly know that the teams that get there are going to get better between now and then. So we, we just got to keep getting better, and then that's been our focus. Earlier on against UCLA, it was one of those moments where you guys really had to you know, lock in in crunch time and play really well down the stretch to get that win. What did you learn about your team from that win? Well, I mean, it was a, a frantic and panic game. You know, I mean, they, they, they jumped us a little bit, and – you know, I mean, and you got to give them credit. They came in here and earned the lead, and I'm sure we made mistakes, but, you know, mistakes happen in basketball, and they capitalized on our mistakes. So, um, and then, then we scratched and clawed and, and found a way, you know. Um, I, I was proud of that effort, but, but I was also, you know, I'm aware, you know, of, of how good UCLA can be. And, and you know, obviously we got we to play better, you know, going on the road to, to give ourselves a chance to win than we did you know, in that first half and in early in that second half against them. Did you look any different now than you did, you know, the last time you saw them? Um, you know, no, no. I mean, not, not in particular. I mean, I think that I don't, I don't know if they've had any major injuries that I've noticed. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely a, a better team now than they were at the start of the year. And, you know, I think guys are, you know, comfortable with the roles that they're playing. Um, you know, they, they have a force inside in Bona that's just a, he's just a really good player. And he's, he's a lot to deal with, at, you know, at both ends of the floor. So, and then those guards have, you know, gotten comfortable and confident. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I know I, to me they're, they're a good ball club. You know, I mean, I think you, you take away, you know, some of those losses they had early in the season and, um, and, and just focus on, you know, their more recent stuff, that they, they're pretty good. This isn't a sentimental question about the Pac-12, but you know, you growing up around it, you saw Arizona and UCLA emerge the two biggest brands in this conference. This rivalry has you know spanned decades of some great basketball. Uh, what are you going to remember about this rivalry? What does it mean to you? Well, you know, hopefully the the memories will stay recent because we'll continue to play them. You know, so um, you know, listen, I, I know that there's a, a a good chance we'll have to play. You know, obviously you say once, maybe twice more this year. So. Um, I, I know the, the rivalry is important to both fan bases. Um, you know, I, I don't get too caught up in that, you know, because I, I just have to try to prepare my team to play against their team. And, and so any, anything, you know, the, the past history really has nothing to do with this game. Um, but, but emotions are involved for the fans, and I understand that. I don't know if they're, the emotions are as strong for, you know, the current players or the current coaching staffs. Um, but but I recognize how special the you know both brands are and and what they've meant in the history of college basketball and you know and, and it's an honor to be participating you know as as a coach of one of the teams. When your team is doing well, what do they do? When your team is at its best, what are they doing so well? Um, I mean, I, I think just playing you know really good fundamental basketball both ends of the floor. I, I don't think there's any, any. It's much more complicated than that. You know, I, I don't always just equate our success to, you know, us making shots and them missing shots. You know, I, I think it's when I feel like we're at our best, I think there's cohesion at, at both ends of the floor. And, and, and that's the stuff that, that I, I strive for, you know, when I'm, you know, trying to lead this group is us to be cohesive at both ends of the floor and, you know, not perfect. 
um, by any stretch, but but uh, have an understanding of of how we want to play and playing for each other. When you uh, just to look ahead to USC, since we want to get to talk to you in between, they were not the same team when you faced them. <coughs> they were missing, uh, I believe, Boogie and Collier. So, how much different are they because of that? You know, I'm, I'm sure they're very different, and those are two really really good players. I personally haven't spent much time watching the, them, and you know, I'll, I'll kind of start that, you know, moving forward from here. Uh, as we wrap up our UCLA prep, but uh, no, I mean there there are two dynamic guards, and, and, and Boogie's had an incredible career. You know, I, I think he's been a little bit banged up this year, but um, he's just a, a prolific shot maker, and, and and he's got a lot of savvy. <coughs> and Collier, I mean, obviously looks really talented, and he's just a a bundle of energy and plays with incredible force. So you know he's going to put a lot of pressure on our defense. There's no doubt about that. Last three games, your opponents have averaged uh, 29% from three-point range. I believe that's 10% less than the se uh, season average. Uh, what's allowed you? I don't think guys are shooting 39% on us, but you know, 37. Mm, I'll have to ask our SID. He doesn't give me the stats very often. So, what's, what's allowed? What's allowed you guys to flourish or improve? Well, I mean, you know, guarding the three-point line is important. You know, down the stretch, and you know, not that we're necessarily doing anything different, but I just think you have to have an awareness and you know of. You know, there's some threes you're going to live with, and there's some threes you'd you'd rather not. And just kind of making decisions on those is is really important. Um, yeah, no, I mean that that's good to know. I mean, I haven't looked at the stats, you know, as in depth as you have, but um, you know, I, I I feel like our defense is trending in a in a good direction. I wasn't happy with the second half defensive effort against Oregon, um, you know, and and we're trying to address that, but. Uh, but but all in all, I think the defense is going in the right direction. But it's going to be tested on the road this weekend. So a couple of nice games together, back to back. Do, do you notice if a guy's doing that that he's got a little more bounce in his step, he's a little more enthusiastic, a little more active, or anything like that? Do you notice any difference? Well, I mean, you, you can notice when guys are playing well. You know, I mean, sometimes you know you you can see you know basically you know them playing with joy and, and excitement. Um, but, you know, I would hope that, you know, how a guy, his body language looks doesn't necessarily reflect that he's playing good or bad. You know, we, we want guys to be locked in and be playing with effort and energy no matter how well things are going for them individually. Um, but, but, you know, Kylan's growing. He's a good player. He's a good player. He's just, you know, he's had, he's had an up and down year. Like, I think 99.9% .9 of ever fre other freshmen or 18-year-olds in the country. You know, and and uh, you know he's a huge part of what we do, and and we have a lot of belief in him. Similar note to that, uh, I was looking through our archives the other day, and it seems like a lot of times when a guy gets on an individual offensive heater, it always sort of comes with one or two just stellar plays on the defensive end, stellar on ball plays, stellar effort plays. Is that something that you're preaching to your guys that if you're on a heater, if you're playing well, it needs to come with that defensive effort as well? Well, I mean, I don't necessarily know if I coach guys to be on heaters, you know, but uh, uh, however you're phrasing that. Um, but I think it's important when you're, when you're playing well on offense to play hard on defense. But again, you, you want to do it all the time. And, and I think sometimes maybe when guys get on these, as you call, heaters, a lot of times it's probably made by an effort play on defense that leads to something quick on offense. Um, you know, you, you you know, you see Caleb make a couple threes and then he gets a steal for a dunk. You know, like those things, you know, I I, I mean, kind of go hand in hand a little bit. So, um, yeah, I mean, we you know, we want to be making effort plays on defense. That's important for us. And, and you know, offensively, you know, we, we we're, I'm not a guy that's like, hey, we got to feed the hot hand. I, I just like getting good shots. And, and, you know, shots that are great for our team, you know, possession after possession. If that means, you know, one guy's hot and, and he's getting a lot of them, that, I'm, I'm fine by it. I, I just look at the total score. So I, I don't necessarily get caught up in, you know, heaters or non-heaters. That's a good video now for, uh, of Grant Whiteman for our March Madness special, and he's talked a bit. What's been his biggest contribution to your program? Just high character, high character, great guy, puts the team first. You know, he, you know, his family has an incredible legacy with Arizona basketball. And, you know, I think it's been really cool to watch him be able to have his own journey and make his own impact on Arizona basketball. He's a, he's a, he's a really good basketball player. He's, he helps us in practice a ton and he takes a lot of pride in that. And, and I think that's really special. And, and I've always, you know, told people if, if you are looking for someone to hire for your company, I would always look at a manager, a student manager, or a walk-on first. Those people know how to serve 
uh, the greater good of, of the organization, and, and they know the importance of support roles. And so I, I think that's tremendous. And, and Grant has, you know, been, I hold him in high regard, and, and I'm gonna really miss him, you know? And, and he has a, a COVID opportunity to go play another year, and that's what he's expressed that he wants to do. And there's no doubt in my mind, somebody's gonna end up with a really impactful basketball player. Do you recall anything on the, the Oregon trip between the, the lost Oregon State and the win to Oregon that you did differently addressing the team or anything that, that may have contributed to just the better play? I mean, I told our veterans to start playing better. I mean, that, that was it. I think they have to start playing better. And, you know, I, I, it wasn't complicated. Play better. It matters, you know. And, and we have a mature group of guys, and, and they've owned that. You know, they, they, they know what these moments mean. And, and, you know, ultimately they're the ones out on the court. I'm, I'm responsible for the result, and, and I'll always own that. But I, the, the message was simple, play better. And, um, and you know, they, they have for the most part since then. Does Taylor remind you of any guard, shooting guards you've coached in the past? Or? You know, I mean, a, a little bit like, uh, you know, there's a guy we had at Gonzaga named, you know, uh, Zach Norvell, you know, who was a, a wing player that, was, you know, he was lefty. That was different, but just really talented offensively and, you know, you know, could, had no problem getting up a, a high volume of shots in, in, in making tough shots. Um, you know, Caleb's a special player, and, and he's having a special year. And, you know, I, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of accolades and awards coming his way, you know, whether that's, you know, player of the year type stuff or, um, or you know, um, all-American type stuff. But, you know, we don't talk about that. And, and that, that, that stuff will be a byproduct of, of how our team performs, and, and, and he's deserving of everything that comes his way. But I know this. I know his focus is just on winning the next game. And we, we ain't getting any more complicated than that. You said about the Oregon game, are you going to do your best work away from home? What have you seen from the mentality so far in practice just this week? It's been good. I mean, we know it's good. The, you know, practice has been good. And, you know, today today's wasn't my favorite. But, you know, I, I don't know if uh, you have to practice really good the day before to play great the next day. And, and sometimes, you know, you need a little bit of adversity in practice because those are uh, great teaching moments and, and, and ways you can get everybody's attention. So... Um, you know, it wasn't perfect today, but, you know, hopefully we'll come out and play well tomorrow. With all the uh, history you, and culture you've talked about the program, how much is the Pac-12 title talked about? And does he, are you discussing it more this week as far as, or do guys know what's... I mean, it, it's, it's something we've always had a, you know, desire to win. Um, but, you know, there's they're, they're steps now. You know, you're wrapping up the regular season. So, you know, th this is like a new beginning for us. We're done playing at McHale. We're wrapping up the regular season, then the tournament, you know, and then the NCAA tournament. So, you know, you, you can not win the Pac-12 regular season and still play well in the NCAA tournament. But, you know, we want to go step by step and keep building. So, you know, our, our focus right now is to try to come out and play really well this weekend and put ourselves in position to, to win the Pac-12. We, we know that's not going to be easy. You know, we got a team that's, you know, deserving and right on our heels. So uh, we, we've got to come out and, and, and play well on the road, which is never easy to do. Thanks, guys.